Hello everybody, hello. And it looks like we are live. So I want to welcome you to my house in Tynemouth. Um, so I live in the northeast of England for anybody who's kind of not from around this area. And, uh, and yeah, so welcome to episode two of staying calm, grounded and connected throughout the C virus. Um, so I'm really excited about today because I want to share with you um, some things that I genuinely think are going to help us all to stay sane throughout this time. Um, so let me know when you've joined. Hello to everybody who's joined so far. Hello. I've got people coming on now. That's brilliant. Hello and welcome. This is episode two of Stay Calm, Grounded and Connected with my Zendays. So welcome. Let me know who's here. Um, and just let me know if you can hear me okay, send me a little love heart or a like or something like that. So I want to share with you today um, how to stay sane for the next week. Uh, because if you're anything like me and the kids are suddenly going to be off school and you're all going to be in the house together, this is maybe brilliant news for some people uh, where they all get along hun hunky-dory uh, like Little House on the Prairie. But actually the reality is a lot of families, you know, family dynamics are such that, you know, not everybody gets on all of the time. And so there's going to be a lot of people who are feeling very daunted and very worried about the next week and how everyone's going to settle in with the kids being off school um, and and obviously there's kind of the added stresses as well of businesses being under severe pressure um, work do you work at home do you go in are you a key worker and all of this sort of thing so there's just so much stress and pressure that we're under at the minute and and I want to say you know we genuinely, whether it's you, me, whoever, and the children as well, we're all being massively triggered right now. So we're all in this fight or flight mode. Um, and what that means is that we just need to double down on our efforts to learn how we can calm ourselves. Hello, Melissa. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, so I'm just saying there that we are literally all in this state of being triggered. So we're all in fight or flight. And we're all starting to worry, maybe panic a little bit about how are we actually going to deal with this new normal and with this new reality um, of what we're facing with. And obviously, it is really uncertain. We don't know exactly how this change of life, how long it's going to last. We don't know exactly how to navigate it. But I've got you covered for at least the next week because what I want to share with you today is a little model. We all like a little model, um, a little model I've created that is going to hopefully help us to just stay sane amid all of the absolute uh, what feels like chaos at the minute. And so what I'm going to share with you is my biggest message for today is to practice the pause. OK, practice the pause. And I've got a little model, which is what the pause actually stands for. OK, and I'm going to be checking my notes as well, because there's a lot of things in here that I want to share with you that I think is really going to be helpful to keep us all sane in these times. Um, but the first P, the first P stands for practicing patience and also practicing the physical, literal pause. OK, so I want to first talk about patience. And I want to say to you, and actually, if you've got children as well, you might want to show them this video. I want to say to you that we all need to be super patient over the course of the next week and beyond. But I'm focusing specifically on the next week. We need to be super patient because this is not ideal for you. It's not ideal for me. It's not ideal for the kids. It's not ideal for your other half. It's not ideal for your parents. It's not ideal for anybody. And so actually the normal way that we go on, the normal things that kind of pee us off or whatever, I think we need to really exercise an additional level of patience. So it's patience with yourself. And if you start to feel, you know, overwhelmed, anxious, this kind of thing, don't judge yourself. Just be patient and accept your feelings for what they are. And it's perfectly normal to feel the way that you do. But also try and be patient with your children. Try and be patient with your parents, patient with your other half, patient with whoever else it is that you live with, because we're actually all being called on here to just step up. Everything's changing for all of us, you know, and none of us have got experience in how you deal with this. So actually trying to be kind to yourself and trying to be kind and exercise some patience is really going to go a long way. And that brings me to the second P, which is about practicing the pause. Okay, so 
if you find yourself, and I know I post about this a lot, <laughs> I really do post about it because I practice it a lot as well. So if you find yourself about to say something that's a bit shit, that's a little bit gonna aggravate somebody else, that is less than kind, maybe not necessary, then just stop yourself. Because actually, I think that over the course of the next week, the biggest priority is to make sure that your house, your family home, does not turn into a battleground. So tensions are going to be high, emotions are going to be high, everybody's triggered, stress is high. And what you don't want to do is exacerbate this situation and make things worse for yourself and make things worse, worse for your other half or for your children. Okay, so practicing the pause, practicing the pause. So before you're about to say something, just stop yourself for a moment, just for a moment, and ask yourself, is this necessary? Is it actually necessary that I say this thing? Is it kind? And is it true? You know, and if the answer to any of those questions is no, then that's your opportunity to zip it and throw the key away. Because we actually, I think, are gonna have to be really careful and considerate about how we set up the tone in our homes in this first week of the transition. And there was a quote I was reading before, and it was something along the lines, you might have seen it, it was something along the lines of, you know, children in the future will look back and remember how their family home felt through the coronavirus. And this is going to be a big thing that our children, you know, will remember and what they'll look back on in the future. And so I want us to go into this with a really conscious and aware mindset of, OK, I'm going to have to be a role model in my home. I'm going to have to be a leader in my home. I need to lead my family through this. I need to lead myself through this and I need to be a bit of a beacon of light. Now, that's not to say that you've got to be perfect and zen and all, you know, chill all the time because we'll come on to that. You need to accept how you feel if you're feeling anxious. But actually, this is about making a choice every single day to be very aware and very conscious that you need to practice some patience and you need to practice pausing and asking yourself some questions. If you're just about to say something that might piss somebody off or it's maybe not necessary or it's maybe you're saying it, you know, to just try and get a bit of a reaction, then my advice is don't zip it, chuck away the key. You just don't need to be adding to that level of stress. OK, so practice the pause. Patience is the first thing and be flexible as well. The other thing I want to say is it's going to be really important. So whether you're talking to your partner, your children, your friends, your parents, but I think most particularly within the relationships within your own home is to really make sure that you are able to validate people's feelings. OK, so children are probably going to be, hey, Annie, thanks for joining. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, I, I want to say this, validate people's feelings, because I sometimes as well have a tendency, especially with the children. If they say something that's either really uncomfortable for me, so if they're pissed off about something or they're angry about something, then they'll they'll say it to me and I will just cut them off. Well, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. OK, and actually, we need to, again, not do that. We need the, the best way, I think, is to make our children feel safe and heard. And so if they are feeling really angry and, and I can imagine this coming down, you know, coming down the tracks with Hope, my 15 year old girl, you know, she's going to be angry that she can't go out and see her friends. And guess who it's going to be directed at? Yours truly. Uh, and it'll be the same for you as well. If you've got children who are going to feel really cooped up and feel really, you know, just peed off and frustrated and angry because actually all the teenagers care about in their life is their independence and their friends and that's it and actually what we're doing with all of the measures that we need to take is to take away a lot of the freedom and to say sorry you can't go and see your friends in the way that you're normally used to and so that is a little bit of a recipe for um for, for, for some very difficult conversations and i'm sure if you're like me being a mum to a teenager, you're very aware that those sorts of uh, conversations are going to come. So instead of, you know, don't be so selfish or, or anything like that, it needs to be, I understand that you're angry. 
I understand that you feel frustrated. I understand it's really hard to not be able to go and see your friends when you want. But there's other things that we can do, which I'm going to talk about, that I think will also really support our teenage children and our, and our little tiny children as well. Okay. Um, the next one, so, so for pause, we've talked about practice patience and we've talked about practicing the actual physical literal pause. So putting a space between what you are thinking and what you are going to allow to come out of your gob. So we need to be really, really careful. Okay. And he's just saying here, it's so true. And what I've been doing today with my six, year six children on the last day, they're worried and emotional that they may never all be together again. It's a huge deal. It really is a huge deal. And, and actually there's a friend of mine, um, I saw a post that she put on Facebook last night about her uh, daughter who's in year 11. And just like that, suddenly, no prom, no farewell party, not going to see your friends, you're not even going to do GCSEs. And that's massive. Like, it's absolutely huge. And I guess this is this is the whole the whole point, really, of the P in this pause model is just put yourself into other people's shoes, you know, put yourself into other people's shoes and imagine how they feel, especially the people that you live with. How must they feel? How frustrated? Maybe how scared must they feel? And validate it. Just let them and accept them, accept their feelings for what they are and don't argue with them. It's pointless arguing with them, but just let them feel seen and be safe and feel heard. OK, so moving on, then the A is for acceptance uh, and also for awareness. So. And we're doing for anyone who's just joined here it's the pause model so p is practicing patience and practicing the physical pause the literal pause so like stopping what's about to come out of your mouth if you're about to create world war three um, and then a is about acceptance and awareness so acceptance really is about if this is for you this is for you where you can actually take a minute to just accept what is actually happening because there's a lot of people who are understandably resisting this so they don't want to follow the rules you know they're not happy about maybe not being able to go out uh, and you can see it in other countries as well where people are just you know they're just sort of ignoring what the actual rules are and we don't want to do that actually we need to remind ourselves we need to remind our children as well about the actual reason for why we're doing what we're doing and why the country's put in the world are putting in all the measures that they are and that's so that we can get rid of and eliminate the spike of this virus so we need to be reminding ourselves what's happening but we need to accept the situation so look around and you can look around and go yep yeah, this feels weird i don't like it it's really uncomfortable i'm worried about my business um all that sort of thing you know and you need to accept the reality of what's happening and also the reality of how you feel and if you try to resist how you feel or resist reality or argue against how you feel or argue against the reality it's actually just going to cause you so much inner turmoil and so much stress that you can't afford to do it so be aware be aware um, of how you feel and accept how you feel the next point is awareness as well and i want to i want to really get you thinking about how can you stay really aware about what you're consuming okay so in this new reality when we're going to be at home either all of the time or at least most of the time it's going to be really easy to either just turn into a bit of a slob or go ott on caffeine or go ott on food ott on alcohol OK, and all of those things are going to make you feel like shit. They're not going to help you at all. So re and I'm not judging. I'm just saying, because actually what you want to do is to really keep your defenses up. You want to feel as good as you can and not kind of give in to just, you know, let's just let the house be a DOS house and everyone can do what they want, you know, and have no structure. This is really about like, how can you just bring some awareness for how much coffee are you actually drinking and how much tea are you drinking? How much do like coke are you drinking how much alcohol are you consuming because it's really easy when you're spending all this additional time in the house to just give in a little bit more and just let yourself have more but the problem is it's then going to wreak havoc on other areas of your life so if you're drinking loads of coffee for example and you're drinking coffee into the afternoon it's going to affect your sleep OK, so in terms of your caffeine intake, you really want to make sure that you limit. So if you if you go to bed at 10 o'clock, 
you should not have caffeine after two o'clock. If you go to bed at 11, it should not be after three. There's this eight hour window where if you don't want your caffeine consumption to impact your ability to go to sleep, then you are gonna need to sort of knock it off earlier on in the afternoon. So just be really aware be really aware about what you're drinking, what you're eating, and don't just let it turn into some kind of free for all. Um, and also be aware about what you're consuming in terms of the news and social media. So I know I keep talking about this and I will continue to keep talking about this. Because I'll be honest with you, yesterday I was sitting with Josh, we were just at the table, and um, I put the news on for like just my daily kind of five, 10 minute update to download the facts. And within the first sort of three or four minutes, I could feel the fear rising and I could feel myself starting to like have a really uncomfortable experience. And I thought, no, that's it. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to turn it off because the news is going to be there. You can check on it, you know, at any point in the day or evening that you want to. But you really don't want to have it on as this constant stream of just noise and upset and horrifying stories that are, that's going into your mind. OK, so really make sure that you're limiting it. It's the same when it comes to social media as well, because if you sit and scroll, 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 you are just adding to the anxiety. So really be aware about what you're consuming on that. Um, the next thing is, so we've done the P and the A. OK, so I'm talking about hi, hi, hello, everybody, and thank you for, for joining, Mwah, sending you some love. Um, so we're talking today about practicing uh, the pause and I'm sharing a model. Uh, and We've talked about the P, which is practicing patience and also practicing the literal pause. We've talked about A, which is acceptance of the situation and awareness of your habits and what you're consuming. Um, the next one is use, and this is understanding. And so this is really about understanding and taking stock of what you need. This is your sanity survival kit for the next week and taking stock about what you actually need to get you through this period. So last night I literally sat down with a notepad with Adam and said, you know, we are kind of entering into this situation where we're gonna be spending all of this time together at home. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my family, I love Adam, I love Hope, I love Josh, but I don't really want to ideally be spending 24 seven for the next, you know, untold foreseeable future. And so, and I'm sure they would feel the same way about me as well. So there's no offense uh, intended there. We, we love each other, but it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna feel different. It's gonna feel like a massive change. And so actually what we need to do is to be conscious with ourselves and say, what do I need? What are the things I need to be able to deal with this in the best possible way? And then the same for Adam. So Adam was like, well, I'm going to need to have some exercise. I've got to have some time to myself. So we've got a little plan for what he'll do and how we'll kind of free each other up during the day. Because he's got, you know, he's a fine man, but he's also got his own business with the tree houses. I've obviously got my business that I run from home. And so that doesn't just all stop. We just need to be able to support each other and be able to carve out some time. A, to help each other crack on with the work and stuff that we need to do. B, to look after the children and try to make this a nice environment, but also to make sure that we can stay sane. Because at the end of the day, we're the leaders of the family, we're the ones who need to make decisions, we're the ones who need to put the structure in for how this new reality and how this new chapter is actually going to work. Um, so understanding what you need. So have a little chat with yourself and say, what do I need? for me in order to stay sane and what help might I need from my other half or whoever that you live with to be able to give that to myself and also ask the question to the other people and we'll do this with the kids as well is like what do you actually need in order to be able to get through this in the best possible way um, so have that conversation then the next thing as well is about structure so we've done the P-A-U and now we're on to S. So structure, uh, so the S is for structure and self-care. So the structure point, this is a really important point. And I think especially if you have children at home, because if you suddenly, imagine you've just taken away the routine. You no, know, so they have no routine. They're not gonna get up and they're not gonna go to school and all this sort of thing. And we don't know there's gonna be classes online and all of this sort of thing. It's all a bit uncertain. So actually what you can do is to yourself, put yourself in control. You are in control, you're the leader in the family. So you need to have a look at what sort of structure and what sort of routine 
can I create? And I think as well, it's going to be interesting if you've got older kids in the house or if you've got adult children, if you know what I mean, um, sort of like 20 years old and things like that, that, that they, if they're suddenly back at home with you, that they have an input as well to what, how they can support with the structure and what they think the structure should look like. And again, coming back to that first point I was talking about, about, about being patient, I definitely think that we need to be flexible. So this is not about like, right, you are now in an army camp and we get up this time and we do this and this and this, because actually that's just going to piss everybody off. And I think you'd be making a rod for your own back if you try to be so structured and so kind of like binary on the whole thing. I think the best thing to do is to have sort of a bit of a loose structure and a bit of a routine that's got some key components in it. So for example, children really need exercise, you know, and you as part of your, let's stay sane through Corona, you're gonna need to do some exercise as well. Maybe you're already a total exercise boffin and you're constantly out running around and you, you might still wanna do that. But actually, if you're someone who isn't normally into exercise, then I would absolutely recommend that you need to start factoring it into your day because this is going to help you with your energy levels. It's going to help you with your optimism. It's going to help you feel better and not let you just descend into the chaos and descend into the despair. Um, so what we need to do when it comes to the structure, I think, is to just make sure every day, it's going to sound really simple, right? But this is about making sure that you get up, you get washed, you have your shower, you do whatever you would normally do, albeit it might be at a bit of a slower rate, um, but you get up and you do what you need to do so that you can either be at your desk doing the thing you need to do, or you can be having the kids in front of a YouTube, Joe Wicks, you know, he's just amazingly, he's just announced he's going to be doing PE lessons uh, at 9am Monday to Friday. So this is like brilliant for the children. So you might decide that, right, okay, as part of your structure and part of your routine, I'm going to get the kids, I'm going to get the rest of the family in front of the telly to do an exercise workout at nine o'clock in the morning. I think that would be awesome. So just make sure that you've got some time, uh, some time set aside to do some exercise and that you've got a bit of a plan for your day. And then the staple part that I would say is you need to pick a meal, not every single meal, because that not, might not work for you, but a meal time, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, that you agree to do as a family, okay? So what we're gonna be doing with our children is to say, right, okay, every day we'll sit down and have a family meal. Like, come hell or high water, we're having a family meal, it's gonna be at half six, uh, sorry, half five or six o'clock. And so we just get a time, a time where we're set, just sit down and have a proper conversation. It might feel quite normal. You know, it'll feel quite nice and just be able to connect with each other properly. And that is going to be a helpful part of our structure, a helpful part of our routine so that everybody knows what they're doing. And bear in mind that when we're taking all of this structure and routine away from the children, which we are doing after today, since they're not going to be going to school anymore, that can make people feel really unsafe. And children respond well when there's boundaries and they respond well when there's some parameters and some level of routine. So you're actually gonna be doing yourself and them a big favor if you're able to just put a bit of work in, get their input if they're old enough uh, as to what it might look like. And then that's kind of your new operating, you know, the new way that you operate within the family. Uh, and then finally, on to E. So E is for entertainment and exercise. We've kind of already covered exercise because um, I just talked about that. But E is for entertainment and exercise. And entertainment is going to be key because you're going to want to create some fun in the house. You know, and I, I shared actually on my page, I don't know whether you've seen it, that Netflix have got this new thing where you can have like a watch party. So this is perfect for you, either if you're on your own or if you've got sort of teenage children or older children who are like really missing their friends. Netflix are doing this thing where you can have this watch party, like a virtual watch party and you can all chat to each other while you're watching the same film. So there's details, have a look on the My Zen Days page because I just posted it last night and I'll keep sharing more resources because there's loads of brilliant things that are flying around at the minute and I want to try and capture them so that you've got a bit of a place to go and look for what are some of the ideas for things that you can be doing with your kids. Um, so what else? So for the adults, um, you know, we're looking at having virtual cocktail parties with our friends. So either by Zoom or if it's one to one, you could just do FaceTime and things like that. But just make sure that you stay connected with your friends. 
Um, and you can do it, like I say, one-to-one -one or with a group of people and just have a look at what's the best way that's going to work for you. But it's going to be really key, I think, to just make sure you're connected, make sure that you're still able to have a bit of a laugh with people, um, you know, and that you don't end up just driving yourself insane being in the house the entire time. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces of uh, resources, actually, that I wanted to, to mention. Um, so we've got, there's, from an exercise point of view, there's a brilliant um, studio, uh, which is run by a friend of mine, Studio Velo, over in Whitley Bay. And they do bar classes, yoga classes, and Pilates. And they, in any event, were going to be putting the classes online, but they've done it a bit early since they really want to support everybody who wants to exercise and now cannot go to the gym and do that sort of thing and can't go to the classes there. So that's that's a perfect kind of thing. And if so if you want an incredible bar instructor or an incredible yoga and Pilates instructor, have a look at Virtual Velo. So it's on the Studio Velo website and I'll post it again on the page just as a bit of a list of resources. But that's perfect because it's something that you could just do in your home you know um that's going to be wonderful and then for those of you as well with children so if you've got younger children say between like you know three or four and ten um i would definitely recommend that you have a look at the calm folk uh that's my friend louise who i run the mom and child retreats with um and we do some work with schools as well sort of teaching children you know mindfulness and meditation and relaxation so louise has got some brilliant free resources that she's posting on her Instagram stories and also on her Facebook page. Um, and this is things that you can do with your children. So helping them to understand how they feel, helping them to calm, um, teaching them little kind of children's related meditation and stuff. It's just absolutely brilliant. So have a look out for, um, for Louise. And I was chatting to Louise yesterday, actually, and she said, because I said, you know, what, like, what's the biggest advice that you would be giving to people now that, you know, the children are going to be at home? And she said, for the parents, just don't feel like you've suddenly got to become a teacher. Don't panic. And there does seem to be quite a few people going, oh, my God, how are we going to do it? You know, you are you and you've got your strengths. You've got the things that you're amazing at and you've got other things that you're maybe not so great at. And don't worry about it. The biggest thing, the biggest thing that you can give to your kids is some reassurance, some parameters, and to be present with them. And I'm not talking about being present with them all the time, 24 seven, um, because you've got a life to live and you've got a business to run or you've got a job to do, work to do, whatever it might be, and you need a little bit of time for yourself. But just making sure that you carve out some time during the day um, to, to really be present and do some like interesting things, arts and crafts, gardening, cooking, whatever it might be, do those sorts of things with them. Um, and that's and that's my pause model. So you've got P-A-U-S-E. So I want you to write it down, I want you to remember it, and I want you to use it because I think this is going to be the survival guide for how we can stay sane over the next week or so as we start to really adapt and get into the new normal. Um, it's going to be difficult and I know that tensions and stress are high and actually another thing I wanted to mention is because I know tension and stress and anxiety is there and people are feeling it really acutely we've made a decision to uh, to offer our meditation course at half price so we've knocked the price down it's normally 150 quid i think it is it's normally 150 and it's down to 75 and it's an incredible course for you if you're feeling stressed if you're feeling anxious so if you want to learn how to relax if you want to learn about you know, how your brain works and how you can calm yourself. You could do it on your own, you could do it with your partner, you could do it as a family. I mean, it's an incredible course and the students that we've had that have gone through the course have been like, this literally just changed my life. I understand more about how my brain works. I've got a daily practice that supports me and my, 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 my mental health and well-being. Um, and so it really is phenomenal. It's a four week course and there's a lesson every day. You would need to kind of budget about 30 minutes per day. Um, but I think that's going to be part of, again, what keeps us sane. And this was a point I meant to mention, actually, in the entertainment section, the entertainment part of the pause model is about using the time to learn something new. OK, so there'll be some that there'll be things that you've wanted to do, books you've wanted to read, courses you've wanted to do. Um, people you've wanted to watch on YouTube and things like that. And now 
but over the course of the next few weeks, this is the time to do it. And when you're learning and you're making progress, this is when we feel most happy. Um, so one of the things I've done is sign up for a, um, it's an online course with a guy called Jim Quick. And I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's phenomenal. He's absolutely phenomenal. And he is one of the world's leading experts on your brain and how your brain works. And obviously I love studying all about this sort of thing. And his course that he's teaching is how to speed read. Um, and I'm not going to tell you too much about it now because I think I'll probably share a bit more with you next week. Um, because if you're anything like me, where you love books, you love reading, but you've bought way more than you've actually ever had time to read, then I was thinking, right, if I can just learn the skill of being able to speed read, that is going to serve me like amazingly well in this time when we're going to be stuck in the house. Um, so there might be a skill for you that you've always wanted to learn. There might be a course that you've always wanted to do. And this is the perfect, you know, maybe you've wanted to learn to meditate, in which case I'm offering you that course and it's 50 percent off, you know. So that would be a really good time. Now would be a really good time to just invest yourself, choose your focus, take control and learn something new. So you feel like you're really moving forward. OK, and that you're not just stuck. Um, so there you go. That's the pause model. I'm just going to see in the comments if there's anything, any questions. So Annie's saying, uh, oh, yes, about these the year sixes. They've been denied of key events uh, in their rites of passage. Yeah, just there to show I care and listen and give good advice about acceptance. 100 percent, you know, and I think I feel it more for, you know, whether rightly or wrongly, I feel it more for the older ones and the people who were really looking forward to GCSEs, A-levels and that kind of thing and having all of the all the crazy parties that go um, that go along with that. Uh, OK, brilliant. Oh, and Annie's saying as well, yoga is the best thing to do at home. My center is creating online classes via Zoom. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. And, and you can see there's there's many more like exercises, yoga, meditation, Pilates, um, all that sort of stuff that just is being taken online. And it's perfect for you. And I think I really want to use the time that we're going to be at home to learn something new, to get fit, to exercise and to become really like the master of my habits. Because remember, your habits will either make or break you. They really will either make your life or break your life. It's your daily habits. And this is why I thought it was really important today to be talking about this model and the things that we need to be really consciously aware of and practicing so that we don't end up giving into the despair, giving into the panic and just letting it spiral um, and creating some kind of havoc on on everything that we've created so far in our lives. So listen, I wish you um, I wish you all the very best. I hope you have a lovely um, a lovely weekend, and we'll see you. If you enjoyed this, please do share uh, please do share the video or share with your friends, family networks the fact that we're doing this live broadcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at twelve noon. Um, and the idea is all about how to stay sane how to stay calm and grounded and connected as we get through this because we will get through this and we need to bear in mind and keep that in mind no matter what we're doing it will pass it might take a while but it will pass and we'll get through it and it's how we get through it uh, that's going to be the key focus i think for so many people and you can either do it you know with a bit of style and a bit of grace and be connected and have some fun along the way or you can just not make the effort and just spiral into to chaos. And I, I do think it is a choice. I do think it is a decision that we need to make. We need to decide every day that we are going to get up, show up and do what we need to do to lead our families through it, to lead our friends, lead our parents, lead our businesses through this. And we will get there. OK, so with lots of love, I'll be seeing you on Monday. Take care. Have a lush weekend. Bye.